Ah, good morning, everyone. Um, I got a phone call last night. Well, a couple of hours ago. From Bubba. He said he dropped over the, um, the Profi Hopper. He's got it all fixed up. He's got it all sorted out for me. So let's have a look. He said it's just outside the house here. So there's the Defender. Where's the... There's the IMT. Where's the... Oh, what is this? It's this Profi Hopper there. It's this... Crass hopper there. Um, I guess we'll have to take this thing for a test drive and um, see how it performs. Uh, let's see. Let's go over to the sheep pen, which is a. Uh, I mean, we can give some. Okay, so a little breathe and the throttle gets me up to 16 kph. What happens if I just slam the throttle here? Oh, good lord. Okay, this thing is quite, quite fast. So let's get over to the sheep at a somewhat safe speed. Because this is... Come on, around here. There we go, nice and safe. Nice and safe, and slow, and safe, and steady. So there's the sheep in their pen. All calm, and I'm going 30 kph in a lawnmower. Good God. I can't even use the brakes as soon as I touch... Hang on, let me just... I wonder is it just that ah it was just a long brake pedal. As soon as I touch the brakes the thing stops. <laughs> or it was a short brake pedal. See uh, let's let's get in here and, and oh dear. Let's lower the mo what the Okay. We got the mower on now, so let's Let's see what this thing can do with this... Oh my god, what the... What on earth has Bubba done? We're at 2,000 litres of grass already. Okay, I can't complain if... We're mowing at 40 kph. That's 6,000 litres of grass, oh... Good... Bubba, what have you done? You've taken a profi hopper, you've... Bubba... This is the last time I take any sort of recommendation from Quentin. You recommended Sergey, and he ran off. You recommended Bubba to do this, and he's... I mean, he has increased the speed of this thing, and he has increased the capacity, but... What? Why does it need a wing? Why does it need a roll bar? Why does it... Hang on a second. That's a... Fr He's given this thing hydraulics. Why does this need hydraulics for a front loader? It's a lawnmower. I mean, what... Let's just get out real quick and see what else is... He's... That's a three-point hitch with PTO. That's... Also a three-point... And trailer touch. And mud tires. And I don't know how that works, but it does. So this thing is now... Basically... A super fast, super light utility tractor. Good! And I guess that's why it has a roll cage. Because you can basically rally this thing. Good. 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 Never again will I take a recommendation from Quentin. I didn't know that could do. That could happen. Um, 
Never again will I take a recommendation from Quentin, because this is ridiculous. Well, I can't even... Can I reverse this thing in a sane manner? Because I think... Yeah, the reverse speed for this is about the same speed. Also, why is there... Um... This thing has its own fuel tank, doesn't it? Just to add ridiculousness to the ridiculousness, it has its own fuel tank. Good. So we got 29,000 litres of grass for whatever we want to do with it. Which is good, I guess. Oh, this is the wrong way. Um, I mean, the advantage to this thing is it has four-wheel steer, which means it can turn on a dime. Let's get this thing up somewhere near full speed. That's 60 miles an hour. 75. 100 miles an hour. Okay, got to slam the brakes. So, we can now go 100 miles an hour in our lawnmower. Which is... Scary. To say the least. Um, let's get this back up to the farm and try and use it as little as possible. I mean, the bright side is we don't need to worry about using a trailer for this anymore because we can... Yeah... Yeah, this is a bit cr a bit too crazy for me. <laughs> oh dear, Bubba, what have you done? Brights, okay. Let's look at the bright side here. Let's look at let, let, let's 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 um be generous. We no longer need to worry about grass because we got thirty odd thousand liters in that thing. Um. Downside is, that thing is stupid fast. I've left... As much as I dislike this thing, I don't want the battery to run out, so let's just turn off the beacons there. Right. Uh, can't believe he did that. Let's do something serious. Because that was clearly not very serious at all. Um... Let's see what needs to be done around the yard, around the farm here. Um, is our grass doing well? Our grass is actually ready to harvest. So, it being summer and whatnot, let's get the mower out. Red runs. It is summer, so it is time to make some hay. We didn't get any silage made yet, but that's not a big deal. Um, the main priority is going to be getting hay made, getting hay sold off, keeping a few bales uh, for, well, we don't actually need, uh, for the winter, I guess, for the sheep, because uh, for whatever reason they refuse, they will refuse to eat grass in the winter. Um, I've been told this by the, the, the guy that delivered them. They just refuse to eat grass in the winter. So we got our Massey Ferguson 885 here. I'm going to bring it over into that field there, um, because it's closest. That's field 15. And we're going to be going on a bit of a mowing spree. Um, now we do still have the small bales over by Stonehenge. Ready to go. But the main priority now is going to be mowing. we got to get these fields all mowed up, all made into hay. We're going to be like one lonely farmer over on YouTube. We're going to be working on that. And I uh, have found recently a quite a large number of videos from Quentin. Um, so there might be a week sometime soon where I just upload them and, and worry about doing things on this farm uh, off camera. That me camera's on. 
Let's get the mower running. She's running. Let's go. She's dropping down grass. Very nice indeed. And this is going to take a while to mow. Because this isn't the biggest mower in the world. I would prefer a big M. Being completely honest, I would prefer a big M over this. But the big M is very, very expensive. Uh, prohibitively expensive. <laughs> For now, at least. Hopefully in time we'll be able to afford a big M. And, uh... You know, worry about that stuff. But right now... Yeah, we're stuck with this more. Um, I do actually, believe it or not, want to swap out the baler for um, an older model. want to swap out our Fent baler for the Massey Ferguson 5 baler. And it's really just a case of I want to save as much money as possible so the Massey Ferguson 5 will produce the same size bales. But it's a much smaller baler, it's much more compact. Um, and it's older, so yes, stuff will go wrong a bit more, and it'll maybe cost um, a bit more in parts. But it is, it has less, it has fewer parts to go, to break. So the balance should be, I save money by using that. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be mowing for a while. I'm going to be honest, it's going to be quite a lot of mowing, quite a lot of tedding, quite a lot of windrowing, and, and a good bit of baling. And then we're going to move all the bales. I mean, that's that's going to be a fun one. It's going to be um, figuring out how we want to move all the bales. But seeing as it is, hey, we can, in, we can actually attach the bale stacker, which I think he... W I think there is um, a Massey Ferguson 5 baler on the market right now with a rear hitch on it so they can attach the uh, hydraulic attacher and just run some hoses over the baler and attach the stacker um, so we can work like that and then get the telehandler in and worry about that now I will be um, also taking care of the industrial estate while, um, while I'm doing all this you know as if it wasn't already complicated enough with um, Basically, half a county's grass to mow. We do have to worry about the industrial estate as well, because that's um, kind of our winter income. That's our winter money coming from the industrial estate, and keeping that running is going to be important. We do have a lot of stuff in storage over there, so that's that's great we'll be safe for the winter I think we've got enough in storage right now that we're safe for winter already so and it's only the start of summer so we got everything we make here is pretty much pure profit um, and basically money that we can play about with same with the sheep that industrial estate is gonna keep us running and actually run us into profit anyway um, and the more money we can make off the farm side of things and all of that, uh, the more money we get to play with to buy new equipment for the farm, to get the farm running even faster. Um, maybe even get the industrial estate running faster um, would be good. And there is some stuff that I've look, I'm have i looking into at the moment for potentially um, expanding the snow plowing, snow blowing side of things in the winter if it snows um, just so that you know the council can rely on me um, I have heard they've been decking a couple of contracts for this winter which I don't particularly mind it's less less worry for me a bit less on my plate that I don't need to worry about so that's perfectly fine by me I, I don't mind them giving a couple of contracts um, you know, he's, he obviously is going to do his own yard um, he's also, in conjunction with the council, going to be doing the main roads, but the secondary roads are still with me. Um, I think he said he, I think they said he's got, uh, well, he will be doing the church up by him as well. Um, because, you know, it's in his area, it's pretty much across the road from his compound, so... It's not the biggest of deals that he gets, he, uh, will do that, it saves me getting over there. 
For some reason, he doesn't want to do the roads. I don't know why. So we'll have the the roads to worry about if it snows this winter. Um, I am also looking into uh, potentially getting a new farm in, a couple, in maybe the end of this year, start of next year already, believe it or not. Um, there's an old estate up for sale. And, uh, it's actually Quentin's old place. Um, I could have sworn it was turned into a car park. And a shopping centre. But no, it's actually, um, up for sale at the moment. I need to save money up for that. Um, and I mean, I could bring a lot of the equipment from here, over to there, and, and start up pretty solidly over there with whatever equipment I have, so... Um, keeping the industrial set running is going to be kind of a big priority for a little while, I think. And, uh... Hopefully we'll get back over to Ventanlin Estates, which, uh... We'll please Quentin and hopefully we might find Sergei somewhere along the way. Um, now Quentin, I've been talking to him and he actually wants, he still owns Orchard Farm. I didn't know this, he still actually owns Orchard Farm. Um, and he wants to go over and do that kind of part time while working here, just, we want, I don't know what exactly he wants, because I mean he owns that farm, surely he'd work there full time and kind of work part time for me, which that's kind of the arrangement I offered him, and he said, yeah, that's... He seemed very agreeable, he liked that idea, so, um... I told him he can make more videos over an orchard, and... Um, give them to me, and I'll upload them for him, and worry about all that, so... You might get more videos from there. Um, Sergey, I... I'm guessing he's run off to Russia or something. I don't know where he's gone. Uh, Bubba has offered to take his place on a kind of a part-time basis in between working with Quentin over an orchard farm. Um, and I'm kind of okay with that idea-ish. <laughs> I'm not 100% perfect with it, but it, it would be an idea. And it would be something that would in theory works, so I'm not 100% against it. But after what he did to the Profi Hopper, I'm not 100% happy either. Um, so that, yeah, that, that's kind of what's going on at the moment. There's a lot of discussions, a lot of talks, a lot of um, possibly mayhem and whatnot, you know, the usual when, as far as Quentin's concerned. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, as far as I'm concerned too, I guess. Um, but the main priority is going to be getting this grass mode, because we need to get all these fields mowed up and baled in the next probably two days. Um, definitely the next, you know, week or so. I mean, yesterday we did quite a lot. We d we got uh, Stonehenge mowed and tedded and windrowed and bailed up and and uh, we even got you know some wood cutting done and moved over to the industrial estate. That's that wood's already been burnt through, by the way. That wood's already fed into the machines. So uh, come winter time, we'll have to do another set of quite a large bit of forestry, I would imagine. Just to make sure that everything there is going to run fine uh, for the winter and the summer. Um, we'll also need to get more trees planted very, very soon. That's going to have to be a, one of the higher priorities, getting more trees into a field. And uh, the field will probably end up being a... Uh, what's currently one of the meadows. Just because of the way things are working out, I don't have that much ground available to me. And it's probably going to be actually field uh, field 3 as it currently is. That meadow there would be um, pretty perfect for 
throwing some trees in and using that as a kind of auxiliary forest. Doing well with this mowing at the very least. Um, it's obviously not going to be super fast. Because we are trying to get as much of this mode as possible. But it's, it's getting, we're going as fast as we can. Put it that way. I've got my foot flat to the ground. Um, I'm trying to do this in as, is in as efficient a manner as I possibly can. And uh, I'm trying to get good windrows out of this. Good swaths. Straight out the moor. Spin this around. See, that was a good one. That was a good pass. Doesn't matter that we're not going straight. We'll be... We can worry about straight lines when we're actually windrowing up the, uh... The tethered hay. You can't see it, but there's a fly... Just at the bottom of the windscreen that's annoying me. It's flown off now. Um... I don't know where it's flown to, but it's flown off, which is great for me. I'm gonna just make a little bit of a circle here. Just to get that all kind of in, and away we go again. So we can raise them more now when we come around there. Um, hopefully I didn't miss too much. We can actually, I guess, just follow the circle around. But the main priority, as I've said a few times now, is it's going to be mowing. we got to get all the mowing done. Um, I mean, we're good for, we're good for sheep in the, the spring, summer, and autumn months now for a little while, I think. Um, the ridiculous amount of grass, the what's now apparently called the crass hopper which it is crass and I don't know why Bubba thought that was a good idea um, that's gonna do the sheep for a while getting this uh, grass done is gonna hopefully get the farm going for a little while cuz I'm gonna be selling the majority of these bales I'll only need maybe Whew. Three or four for the winter, if even that. Um, or should I just keep? I'm trying to decide if I want to try and use big bales during the winter or small bales, and I, I'm kind of humming and hawing over that. I think the bigger bales might be better, and we can just um, sell the small ones to the local stables. That might be the better idea. Um, they can come over to the yard. I'll bring them over to the yard, put them into the shed. And uh, the local stable can worry about the bales from there. That bloomin' fly is back, and it is annoying as anything. We are doing the best that we can with this mowing, and my sheer annoyance at the fly, which presumably won't go away anytime soon. Now the real question is, is uh, how long more will it take us to do this field? Because this GoPro doesn't have a whole lot of battery. What I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to keep recording, but I'm going to break this up into a couple of videos. So it might be two or three videos. We're going to be doing a lot of mowing, and uh, you guys need to be aware of that. So this is going to be the end of part one. So, I really do hope you enjoyed this this part um, of the video. You know, it'll, it'll come together over the course of a few days. Don't worry. Uh, well, for you guys at least, it's all gonna be it's all gonna be in one day for me. Hope you enjoyed this part of the video. Um, if you did, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and there is a playlist of all the videos that I'm making here on Thornton Farm. Um, all the vlogs and, and whatnot. So please do feel free to check them out. They should be on the end screen uh, right about now. 
if you uh, I know what I was gonna say there <laughs> you can check out um, Quentin's videos as well they'll also be somewhere on the end screen um, because they are quite entertaining and I've heard a lot of people saying they're enjoying them and want more uh, which is actually kind of the reason that I'm okay with Quentin going off and doing his orchard farm thing. Um, I'm perfectly okay with that. Because it, you know, keeps him out of my hair and it entertains you guys, which, hey, that works for me. Although he does get me to do time lapses every so often, which I hate. So I'll leave you by saying I've been Rainbow Dave, you've been watching uh, uh, some wonderful exploits here on Thornton Farm. Until next time, stay safe, and goodbye.